Hi everybody and welcome to The Flute Practice. It is day 10 of our practice series and today we are going to take a look at some of those forgotten corners, namely trills. I find so often we don't practice them and you know we really should. Like they happen a lot in flute music. So today we're going to take a look at this little forgotten friend and check them out. <laughs> So there's kind of like two parts to today. There is an exercise that I think is very useful for practicing trills. And then there is the Tafanol Gobert number 17 from the daily, daily exercises. This is, you know, I don't think many of us actually page to the back of this book and realize that this last little trill exercise is so useful. I spent so many years thinking like, oh, I wonder like what the really difficult trills are. Well, my friends, Go to the back of Tafnil Gobert, that last exercise, and it's genuinely a page of all the more like tricky, difficult, nasty trills right there for you to practice. So I'm not really going to go through that as much as I'm just going to tell you about that. What I'm going to show you is a nice way that I like to practice trills and really make sure that they are clean, precise and even. As I'm sure you've realized by now, I kind of tend to work in scales for the whole week. So I kind of have like one tonality for a week and I do lots of different exercises in this tonality. One of the exercises that I do is trills. So just because I want to be a little bit nasty with myself, I'm going to do this in E flat major. Let's hope for the best. So. For those of you who are, you know, maybe not so advanced or whatever, it might be choose an easier key. Please do not start here. This is a nasty key. For those of you who want to challenge yourself, it's a good place. It's a good place. What you're going to do is you're going to go through each degree of the scale and you're going to trill. But we're going to start off, and this is a really great exercise. I'm not going to do it now, but do it with your metronome just to really make sure you are precise. So first, just doing two, then three then four then now we we'll skip five six then eight and already you can hear at eight I'm starting to sound like a troll this is to make sure that my fingers are really very regular and even so that when I do eventually get to my normal trill I am quite sure that my fingers are under control. You can do this on every single step of the scale. And so on and so forth. I'm not going to go through the entire scale. You kind of get the idea. Very similar to that other exercise that we did with the tonguing, where you are two, three, four, increasing it slowly, just making sure you are absolutely in control of what you're doing. Especially if you like learning trills for the first time, I find this a very useful exercise because you kind of stop where it gets kind of out of control and a bit tricky, but it's a nice way just to train those fingers to do those movements quite slowly. It's really great when we have these tricky trills. I remember I used to struggle with this G to A flat trill. So really I started off slowly. And in time, this guy, this poor little baby finger, he got a bit stronger, he got a bit more sure of what he was doing. Uh, just a little kind of side tip. Really, I find the rounder you can keep this finger. I, when I tried trilling with the straight finger, I ran into a lot of trouble. The rounder I could keep this finger, the easier and more quickly it trilled. Just my personal little side tip. All right, guys, so choose a scale, go all the way around, up and down, or just up, you don't have to go down again, I suppose. You can also practice some of those classical baroque trolls where you're starting on the upper note and with the the Nachschlag. I don't I don't know that I think that is like the official term for it. Anyway. Doing those kind of trolls and really going through your key again and practicing them. Very famous in the Mozart concerto, these these kinds of uh, I'm trying to think of the Very nasty, that third finger. Um, or there was a lot of... 
those kind of turnaround things, which we should also practice and we need to practice. So for those of you who are more advanced, you can do these different kinds of trills, whether they are the Baroque trills, uh, you know, the slow with the slower poggiatura and the res resolution, the quick ones like in the Mozart, whether they are the more romantic trills, which is just start on the note and go, you can practice all these different kinds of trills on your scales one step at a time. Really great for your finger, strength and dexterity, and also really great for like basically all flute pieces because we have so many trills. I don't know what it is about the flute and the bird and the trills and but it's a thing guys so practice your trolls cool guys that was just a little bit of trilling for today go check out that tough and bear exercise i love it it's really got the difficult trolls in it you know the ones that we really struggle with uh so it's such a cool exercise you'll see they actually are doing i think more of the classical with the sort of little resolutions at the end laying them out very systematically it's really 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 great go check it out and have fun with it. Have fun with these trills. They aren't supposed to be a burden. They're supposed to be fun and exciting and joyful. So be joyful. Until tomorrow, everyone, happy practicing and see you then.